If I did that dumb thing where I started my video with a random clip from the video, it'd be like, look at how unnaturally fast this car goes through these corners. It has to be faster in Jupiter than Earth, right? Find out by watching this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beeman G Drive, and today we're in the garage doing a little science experiment. So I think most cars will be faster on Jupiter than they are on Earth. So to test this out, we're going to start with a car I made that I'm almost certain will be faster on Jupiter. And then we'll try cars where maybe it will be, maybe it won't be. So the car you see on the screen is a modified Bruckel Moonhawk. I took the track edition and then I gave it some engine upgrades so it's making over a thousand horsepower. So I also gave it a little bit bigger wheels in the rear. So it has 345s in the rear so it can put down the power better than what it has by default. But this is still way more power than you can rightfully put down to those wheels. And now we're going to do the tests. So we're going to run a time trial at West Coast USA's racetrack and we're going to compare the times. So the first run we're going to do is in normal gravity. There is nothing sketchy going on. This is just regular racing with way too much power going to those rear wheels. And if you look in the bottom left, you can see how much power I'm using. And we're probably rarely going to use more than 50% power because even with really big fat racing tires in the rear, that is not enough to put down the power this car makes. Because in its current configuration, it makes about 1,000 500 horsepower and of course with it being an older car it doesn't have traction control i am the traction control so i have to be very very careful with how much power i put down if i start to put down too much power we will slide we will crash but even if it had traction control it's not going to magically make it better at putting down the power it would just make it easier because i can floor it and i don't have to worry about trying to be very careful in finessing the throttle Everything else about the car though is exactly what you'd expect it to be out of a track car. The steering is pretty predictable and if you do end up sliding it, it's relatively easy to recover the slide and continue driving. And I want you to take note of the engine temperature in the bottom right corner of the screen. You can see the engine is just in its regular working range because I'm not really pushing it hard because I'm always just using partial throttle 90% of the time. On the straightaway, we might be able to actually use 100% throttle, but I'm pretty sure even in fourth gear going like 120 miles per hour, we would still get massive amounts of wheel spin. That's how much power this thing is making. So I'm trying to just keep it in line, get it across the finish line. So we got a time of 127, and here we go. We're going to use full throttle. Yeah, you can see it just goes sideways. We got wheel spin at even those kinds of speeds. So anyways, we have now crashed the car. Whoa, did the tire just come back? Oh, no, it was the other side's tire. That would have been amazing. I saw it just, like, bounce right back where it went for a second, it looked like. Anyways, though, as I was saying, there's a look at the damage, and then we're going to reset it. But this time, we're going to rebuild the entire planet on Jupiter, which gives us a gravity of 24.92 meters per second squared. So that's about two and a half times more than Earth. And right off the bat, you can already notice, I am putting down 100% of the power without any sort of issues. It feels like this car has tires that are made out of glue. They stick to the surface so ridiculously good. Everything just feels better and faster. We can go around the corners at much higher speeds. We can brake later. And we might even be accelerating faster in a straight line, which really makes it feel like there's almost no downside. The only thing I noticed that's a little bit worse is the handling is not as predictable, which might be able to be counteracted by just modifying the suspension to be set up to actually work on a planet like this. But the way it is right now is if you get sliding, you're not going to be able to recover it as easily as if you were using it on Earth. That and you're not going to be able to drive as long because both the brake and engine temperatures are higher because we're pushing the car so much harder when we're on Jupiter, especially the brakes. We get brake fade almost instantly. So we are now across the line in a time of one minute and three seconds. That is almost 25 seconds faster than we were on planet Earth. That is just absurdly fast. I thought there'd be a little bit of a difference. I didn't think it'd be 25 seconds of difference though. All right, the next thing I want to test then is, is this faster in a straight line or is it just pulling through the corners super amazingly? So to test that out, we can go ahead and just go to the drag strip and do two runs there. And we're going to do the same thing as last time where we start with Earth gravity, then we move to Jupiter. And I should mention, this is a prep surface. So that means both cars are going to have more traction here than they had on the racetrack. So this will be a disadvantage for the vehicle driving in Jupiter. But even with that disadvantage, I think it'll still beat 
the one on Earth. So we're going back to Jupiter. And I bet you this is going to be a heck of a lot easier because I'm not going to have to fight the car going left and right. It's just going to go straight. And the time we got to beat is 9.24. And we are across the line with a time of 8.4. So the car is, in fact, not only faster in braking and in the corners, but faster in a straight line as well. It truly is an all-around improvement. Now, we're going to try to do the exact opposite of this car. So back to the garage for my next creation. This is a modified version of the Hill Climb SBR4. And by default, this thing would have 800 horsepower and it has tons of grip with the Hill Climb configuration. I whipped that engine out and I put a comparably pathetic 170 horsepower engine in its place. So it's basically the exact opposite of the other car because it has amazing amounts of grip, but barely any horsepower to actually make use of that grip. So once again, we're going to go ahead and do a test at the exact same racetrack. And once again, earth gravity first, and then we'll lower the gravity afterwards. And with the setup this car has, we don't have to worry about wheel spin or locking the wheels when we brake. We could just hammer on the inputs, very similar to how it was when we were driving on Jupiter using the Moonhawk earlier, except everything is much, much slower because we have an overall slower vehicle. And also, it makes me look like a lot better driver than I actually am at times because we have so much grip and we're driving so slow. It makes it really easy to always get on the corner and feel like you're nailing the apexes every time and you barely have to slow down. If I overshoot a corner, I can slam on the brakes way too late and it'll stop in time for the corner because we're only going 80 miles per hour at most into these corners it seems like. We're not going to be going fast enough where we can overshoot it that badly unless you're a complete dummy who tries to go through every single corner without slowing down at all and they play online racing games and their brakes or whatever car is in front of them because well there's no car in front of you here buddy you are going to crash into that corner even under these absolutely absurd circumstances and the funny thing is is I don't even know how well this thing would drive if I was to try to slide it around a corner because it just doesn't slide it doesn't have enough power to accidentally kick those rear wheels out you're just planted to the ground and all you got to worry about is trying to find that perfect racing line so you can nail those apexes which I didn't exactly do but that was still a pretty decent lap I would say with a time of 1 minute 33 seconds almost dead even so let's go ahead and wreck this guy we're going 100 miles per hour kind of bump that wall and then here's another wall not that much damage there, just some minor damage overall, so you can see what it looks like. And we could probably keep driving after that. But now, we're going to go ahead and change up the gravity. So once again, it's still going to be Jupiter Gravity. And I love how you can just see the car squat when you activate Jupiter Gravity. And with Jupiter Gravity, I don't even know if we need to brake for most of the corners. This might be the only corner we have to brake on because we have a big straightaway coming at it. So we're going to enter it at almost 90 miles per hour if we don't brake. So we slow down just a little bit. And even that was a bit too much. You see how much wider we could have took that corner. But I think the rest of the track, we can just go flat out. I'm not going to let up on the gas at all. We're just going to floor it the whole way and see if that is actually a practical way of driving this car on Jupiter. You will notice our top speeds are lower and Jupiter gravity. The extra gravity is definitely making the car feel slower in a straight line. And we can go ahead and confirm this after this race by doing another interplanetary drag race. Doesn't this sound really fancy if you say interplanetary instead of just we change the gravity? I gotta start saying interplanetary for any sort of comparisons from here on out, right? But back to the car, I really don't even know how to describe the way it's driving right now. It's kind of like a Formula One car, I guess, where you just have so much grip, it's unbelievable. But we don't have all the power of a Formula 1 car, so that's why we can just go flat out through every single corner. So the question is, is will we make up enough time in the corners to be faster than the previous time? Now this course is more of a technical course where there's not any high speed areas. So that's definitely beneficial for this test. If we had a different course, the results might be different, of course. So with this one, we have a time of 1 minute and 26 seconds. That is still 7 seconds faster than the previous time. Oh, and I got myself there. I got used to just being able to drive flat out. Guess we can't do that anymore. Hey, look at my wheel rolling away. You can see it's the gravity pulling it in a very unusual way. Wheels don't usually look quite like that when they roll. Anyways, though, here's a quick look at the damage to the vehicle. And then we're going to 
Swap this car out for a car that might actually be slower on Jupiter gravity on this specific course. So to do that, we need a car that's really slow in a straight line. So the extra pull of Jupiter's gravity will be enough to significantly slow it down in all parts of the course. For this, we're going to use the inline six version of the gravel blue buck. This car has about 120 horsepower, but it weighs 3,600 ish pounds. With statistics like that, I would expect this car to do a quarter mile in like 18 seconds. And when you get above 15 seconds or so, that's where you really don't get the benefits of Jupiter gravity anymore. Because with a car that slow, you're really going to struggle to get up to speed. And all Jupiter gravity is going to do is make your car slower in a straight line. Yes, it'll handle better in the corners, but will that be enough benefit with a car this slow? That's what we're going to try to find out. And it's funny, when we go around a corner, you can tell this thing is not at all made for driving around a racetrack. The other cars are very competent in the corners, and you can just cruise through them. This one, it's just understeer for days. It does not like being here, and we need to slow down a ton for the corners. Will that change the Jupiter gravity, though? That's a good question and we will find out. And I just had another thought that I'm not going to get to test in this video, but it is something I want to put out there. I wonder, with Jupiter Gravity, does that make it where all of the extra downforce bits you see on cars like the SBR4 aren't really as important? Since you don't need the extra downforce that is generating because it already feels like it weighs a lot more than it normally would? Just something I thought about. There are actually a few different things I've thought about that would be good for doing a test with the different gravity. So if you guys like this video, do leave a comment so I know, and then that way we could do more gravitational style testing. For example, if this car is slower on Jupiter, does that mean it would be faster on the moon or something with less gravity than Earth? For now, we're going to leave those topics at that. Maybe in the future though, we will come to revisit them. But you can see, this car is much slower than any other test we've done so far, which is why I was talking about random stuff because I knew it was going to take a minute for it to get to the finish line. Well, technically, it's going to take two minutes for it to get to the finish line. Well, actually, are we going to beat two minutes? We got 11 seconds from that checkpoint to get to the finish. Oh, this thing is so slow in a straight line, it's not going to make it. It's going to be close, but it's not going to make it under two minutes because there is two minutes and we're not there quite yet. Two minutes and one second. By far the slowest time we've seen so far. And after all that driving, we got to do at least one crash, right? So boom, there it is. Ooh, that was kind of interesting. That really shifted the whole vehicle. Look at that. Well, let's go ahead and reset it and see how well it does on the exact same racetrack, but this time it was placed on Jupiter. Although really now I shouldn't say that because if this was actually on Jupiter, the air would be completely different and I doubt you could even get a normal vehicle to start under those conditions. Actually, that's something I'm not sure about for Beam and G Drive now that I think about it. I don't think it simulates a difference on how the engine works depending on the gravity. Because I know when you go to higher elevations, cars will drive different because the air is different up there. So would that mean when you're driving on higher gravity levels, the air would be denser so it should also change how the engine drives? Because I don't think it actually changes the engine output depending on the gravity. But I do know for a fact that some maps get high enough where it changes how the engines drive and some really highly strung vehicles won't even start in those kinds of environments in this game. Anyways, back on topic to the blue buck you see before us though. So I've been through a couple corners and it seems like we are going to go flat out through every corner no problem considering we're going 36 miles per hour. This car is definitely struggling just to drive normally under these conditions because we're basically driving around a car that weighs 9,000 pounds with an engine that was the worst you could possibly get on a car that weighs 3,500 pounds. Oh, look at that. The engine is actually overheating a little bit because if you look in the bottom right corner, you see the engine temperature light is on. That means it's getting too hot. Now we're going to drive okay, but if we start to see smoke coming out of the engine, that means there is degradation to the performance of the vehicle. And just as you expect, right as I said that, there is some smoke. So this isn't a perfect test, but just based on driving and the way it feels, I can tell you with 100% certainty, even if we had an engine that never smoked, this blue buck would definitely be slower than the original one on planet Earth. And also, you remember how I mentioned earlier that the cars heat up faster? 
There's a great example of that. This car overheat because it's just a regular basic vehicle. The Moonhawk didn't overheat because we weren't flooring it 24-7. The SBR4 didn't overheat because that thing had a radiator for an 800 horsepower engine, but then I swapped in a 170 horsepower engine, which barely generated any heat at all. And I am still flooring it, and this car is barely moving. So the new question is, is will it even get to the finish line? This engine wants to blow up right now. It's going to be close. So we are going to get a time of 2 minutes and 31 seconds. And if I had to guess, if we had a functional engine the whole time, it would be about 10 to 15 seconds faster than that. But that would still be 15 to 20 seconds slower than the time we had on planet Earth. So we are done with this car. And oh, the engine has just died. All we can do now is just let it roll. Now, I was hoping to get an impact at the end here, but it's not even going to make it to the wall because the gravity is just too strong. So instead of crashing, let's just look at the car. And actually, it looks really good. Look at how low to the ground it is thanks to Jupiter gravity. That's nice. And now I want to do one final test. And for this test, we're going to bring back the special SBR4 that you saw earlier, aka Gravy 2 with a thumbnail where you can't even see the vehicle. And this time though, we're going to change the course to be one that's more wide open and it's more of a speed focused circuit than a tight technical one. Now what we're going to test is we're going to see if we get a car that is not fast on a straight line and it's already really focused on grip, then we bring it to a course that's more about straight line speed, will it be faster on Jupiter still or will Earth be a faster time in this situation? And I know this isn't a true speed circuit. A true speed circuit like an oval, for sure this car would be faster on Earth than Jupiter because on Earth we could go flat out already. Jupiter would just make us go flat out still, but we'd be going at slower speeds. This track is right in the zone where I don't know which one will be faster. I almost feel like if you're a really good driver, you're going to be faster on Earth gravity because you'll be able to pull off a good lap. But if you're a bad driver, you're going to be faster on Jupiter because with Jupiter, you're going flat out the whole time, so you don't have to think about braking zones and all that. So it makes it easier to have a reasonably fast lap. And with the way this car is set up, I really got to focus on the exit speed. So I got to take the corners extra wide so we can exit the corners really fast. And oh, that is not how you do it. We have definitely lost some speed there. But overall, I still feel like we can have a decent lap. It's not going to be perfect, but it's never going to be perfect with me behind the wheel. All I can do is get a decent lap and then compare it to the other one. Unfortunately, though, we did have kind of a bad entrance into the main straightaway. And I really feel like that straightaway is going to be the key for me beating the Jupiter time. Because I was able to go about 110 miles per hour through there. With Jupiter gravity, I expect it to be a decent bit less than that. Unfortunately, we won't have split times to actually compare the cars side by side. So I just got to go based on feel or try to remember the numbers that we have from each individual checkpoint, which I'm not going to be able to do because I wasn't paying attention to that. I'm trying to pay attention to my driving and that corner was just a little bit too hot. We cut across the dirt, which is just a little bit cheating. It wasn't a lot of cutting across the dirt, just a bit, but that makes up for the corner where I made the mistake. So in the end, it should be a decently average lap for me doing normal driving. So we have a time of two minutes and 11 seconds and I'm excited to see the outcome here. So I'm not going to mess around with a crash. We're going to go straight into the next race with Jupiter gravity enabled. And I think for this lap, we should be able to just go flat out the entire way. I don't think there's going to be anything that's a tight enough corner where we need to actually use the brakes. It makes me wonder, did I need to use the brakes on that very first corner earlier? Yeah, that corner to the right looks tighter than the one we're going to the left. Either way, it doesn't matter though if I left time on the table because the Jupiter gravity was in fact faster than the Earth gravity. This one though, it's going to be a lot closer. So I need to make sure I get as much out of the car as I possibly can. But if I had to guess, I'm going to leave more time on the table with the Earth gravity car than the Jupiter one. Because as I said earlier, the Jupiter car is a lot easier. Since I don't have to worry about hitting the brakes, all I need to focus on is just trying to nail the apex while flooring the car the whole way. Like going through that corner on Earth gravity can be a little bit tricky because you saw I slid a little bit on the exit from that corner, but there, there was nothing but a clean corner. Same for this one. I went a little bit too wide trying to maintain as much speed as possible. There it was nice and simple. Now I bet I exited the corner initially with close to, if not more speed than Earth gravity, 
But now on the straightaway, you can see my acceleration is suffering severely. We were going 110 tops on the straightaway. Now we're going only 91, 92 miles per hour. And just going up this hill is slowing us down to like 80 miles per hour. That is much, much slower than the Earth one. So hopefully, if the Earth one's going to stand a chance, that would be the key point. Which makes me messing up the entrance even more painful. I almost want to redo it. If it's close enough where I feel like I could beat the time I get on Jupiter with Earth, I'm going to redo it because this race really feels like it's going to be a neck and neck race. I'm looking at the time right now. We got 149, 150, and I am going to be so close to 210 by the time we get to that finish line. This is a good race, actually. Oh, man. All right, 10 seconds left, and we can still go flat out through this section, which will help a lot because we can exit that corner going 65 miles per hour. I'm sure we weren't going that fast before. And there's the finish line. Oh, we are at 210, 211, 212. So we are about a second and a half slower in Jupiter gravity. So that shows you that it really does depend on the vehicle and the track for whether or not Jupiter gravity is actually a benefit. But it seems like for most normal situations, if you have a high performance vehicle, Jupiter gravity will benefit you. But if you have a low powered vehicle like this one, maybe not so much. Now, just for fun, we're gonna bring back the gravy version of the Moonhawk and just do a really fast lap through here and see how fast can we go. And I'm resetting the vehicle there because it starts you in the air a little bit and when you start the Jupiter gravity, it slams you into the ground and sometimes it damages your suspension. It really is interesting though, how many different variables we have to think about here. Like this car, it's not just the fact that it has a massive power to weight ratio that's easily able to overcome the gravity, it's also the fact that it can't put down the power normally, so it makes it accelerate faster in a straighter line as well. This car benefits entirely from Jupiter gravity, and maybe even on an oval, it might still be faster on Jupiter gravity than Earth, because it was faster in a straight line on a drag strip, but then other cars, maybe it depends on the course. You know, this makes me have a really dumb idea for a future video. What we could do is we could have it where we take a car and we want to go around the course as fast as possible. So to make it go even faster than normal, we swap gravity mid-corner so it can really just grip the ground and go through the corner hard. And then once we get to the straightaways, gravity lets up so we can accelerate really hard as well. Oh, and check this out. Look at the brake temperatures here. The brakes are faded so hard because when we slow down in Jupiter, we slow down hard. The brakes are just basically topped out at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just absurd how fast things get hot when you're doing things in Jupiter. It's crazy. But you just look at the way this thing drives and it looks so fast. If I did that dumb thing where I started my video with a random clip from the video, it'd be like, look at how unnaturally fast this car goes through these corners. It has to be faster in Jupiter than Earth, right? Find out by watching this video. And then also, that's the end of the video. So until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how much faster cars are in Jupiter than Earth. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.